Greetings, Donald Jones here. We're live in Brooklyn, New York at one of my favorite studios, Electric Garden. You know what I'm saying? Look it up. One of my favorite studios to record out of. And um, yeah, I'm thankful to be on Gear Fest 2021. Glad things are opening back up. And I just want to first talk about the products that I'm using. Today I'm using a Daru Jones New Yorker, short for DJNY. That's this drum kit right here. It's made by PDP via DW Drums. And yeah, everything about the, the drum kit is, we're trying to do something portable. Just a few bags you can carry from shoulder to shoulder. And that's what I'm using today is the gold and sparkle, gold and black sparkle um, with, the, with, the, with the fade. Um, I'm also using my signature drumsticks called the DJ. It's basically the same color scheme as the drum kit. DJ and Y, Leo. I'm a lion, you know, that's my that's my birthday month. So we want to get the color scheme to kind of match the like the lion. Um these are made by head drumsticks, DJ and Y, Leo stick, you know, for the claw. Um I'm also a Remo drum heads artist, so that's what I'm using. I actually got some custom head drum heads with my logo, Rusic Records. It's basically like looks like a vinyl record. Places in the middle with the vinyl, Rusic Records. Those are the drum heads I'm using. Um, another thing that I'm using today are my signature stick for Peisty, called the D the PSCX DJs 45s. Here it is. It looks like a vinyl record. Everything is size 12, and basically we were just trying to come up with um, with some symbols that you can put right in your backpack. Because as y'all know, being a drummer, symbols are the most heaviest thing in life. So. I was, you know, thankful that I got a chance to work with Pisces on these really cool bits. And it comes with three three different symbols. There's a crash symbol, which is right here. It comes with a hi-hat, and they're all size 12. And basically, the PSTX, the sound, it's like 8-bit, like Nintendo. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Nintendo, but the drums are, you know, lo-fi. Um, and it's the Swiss cheese vibe. So I think that's about it. Oh, I got some more toys. I'm also an LP, like percussion artist. So I'm using these, these tricks. And then they also came up with the tambourines. And they have these in various sizes. And I, I like them because you can just, everything, you can make your drum sound like a tambourine. Everything you put on it, you can make it sound like a tambourine. So I like to kind of be creative. Right now I'm using it on the stack. And that's about it. Basically, since I'm in the studio, I just want to I want to just go over some grooves that I played on some records that are out right now currently, and just talk about just you know when you get a job and basically my theory is the music tell you what to do. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's like a thousand things you can do on a record, but only a few that's going to work to enhance. So basically, when I'm in this in a setting, depends on what it is. If we're writing the tune on a spot, you know. I'm going to try to be, a, you know, be, think with being a team player. How can I make this song sound great? Instead of playing all the chops ever, you know, and taking over and hogging the record. It's, you know, I just, I just think it's really great, you know, to try to see. It's a conversation. And I, and I feel like the music tells you what to play. You know, that's why um, I consider myself a genre bending drummer. You know, I don't just play one style. I can go from gospel, hip hop, rock and roll, as well as, Soul, jazz, or whatever. That's that's the type of drum that I want to be. Taking a page out of cast that I, I was admired, inspired by like Steve Gadd, one of my favorite drummers. He didn't overplay, he just, you know, he he got the, the 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 job done. He also had his own flair that he added. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like as y'all notice, when y'all look at my drum kit, it's set up a little bit differently. Um, but it works for me. I had to figure it out, you know, as, as y'all see the angles are facing the opposite way. And it was pretty much inspired. Some of the inspiration came from like watching Gene Krupa, Philly Joe Jones. They all tilt their drums, maybe not in this fashion, but they, 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 uh, it, like, there's two different grips. So, as y'all know, there's the match grip. The match grip, every, you know, because obviously the right side looks like the left side, so it's matched. And then there's a jazz grip, grip called the traditional grip, where the grip is, you know, different on this side. So, basically, from what I was told, the, the reason why some of the drummers tilt the snare drum. And they really tilt it like sideways like this to match the grip, the traditional grip. So I'm going to show you all one second. Yeah, so basically, you know, the tilt, I think it just made it easier for them to do the ghost notes. And I was like, okay, instead of tilting it sideways, 
I took it forward. <laughs> and then, um, you know, just in my journey, when I started graduating or, or, or evolving it and jumping into different genres, in the hip hop community, it was all about having, you know, being authentic and having a style. So basically in the middle of, of the 2000s, I started becoming one of the next hip hop drummers to play with the more elite artists from Tyler Pauly to Farrah Munch, the elite, the elite, elite artists. One of the first live bands that I saw play was a group called The Roots. That was the first time I got introduced to a band playing in a hip hop setting. And one of the things that they said, you know, talk about hip hop is don't copy off me. They had a term that said don't bite off me. So it was, I was just trying to, one of, another inspiration for a drum kit was just to have an identity. You know what I'm saying? Because when I started getting exposed to the modern drummer magazines, they would profile the drummer and the drummer, the drum kit was their I identity. It's like putting on your outfit. When you go places, you want to stand out, you want to, you know, have a certain look. So that's pretty much one of the main inspirations. And then I don't want my kit to look like anybody else that was playing in, in my field. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to talk about, like I said, we just wanted to talk about some of the grooves that I played on some records and servicing the music. Because as y'all know, when you go into settings, it's a lot of ideals and a lot of things you can do, but only a couple things is going to work to make enhance the track. So the first groove that I'm going to play is um, from one of the bands that I'm in. It's, um, the name of his artist's name, his name is Pete Rock. He's a legendary producer from New York City, and he has a band called the Soul Brothers, which also happened to be the music director, MD, and also the drummer. And um, this track is called Say It Again. And basically... What Pete did was, because normally, I think this was his first time letting the band go into the studio and replay the samples live. So basically, he just wanted us to go in and cut it identical to what he did. And that's pretty much what, you know, the pattern that I'm playing is pretty much what he what he played. But I'm going to try to embellish it and add, add my little flavor on it. The name of this track is called Say It Again, and it's on a, on a project called Peach the Mentals Volume 3, which is the third installment. And um, yep, here we go. So that said again, with some Daru flavorings, I tried to spice it up. Oh, another thing that I wanted to showcase is this company called Big Fat Snare Drum, and they pretty much, you know, they like muffles. You know, um, I'm gonna let y'all hear it. So basically, um, without the muffles, the sound of the snare, the snare drum is a lot hollow. So it's like. Put the muffle on. Now you can play rock and roll. Yeah, these are very convenient, you know what I'm saying, when you're trying to get different sounds in your drum kit. So shout out to Big Fat Snare Drum. And these are the Music Records version. Um, you know, the logo for Brandon. These are, actually, if, you, if you're if you interested, we can get you hooked up. Um, and now, and and and, and we'll, we'll include the link in the bio for those that, about all the items that I'm using today. So yeah. The name of the track was called Say It Again. The next track that I'm going to demonstrate is a track, I think, um, what I'm going to 
gonna do next. So it's a track from a band called 13, which I'm a member of. It's myself. The leader is Pharaoh Munch from a, a group called Organized Confusion from back in the days. And the good the guitar player is Marcus Machado, and we're a trio. Just drums, guitar, and Pharaoh Munch, the MC, one of the elite MCs. And um, we had I had the honor of working with him in this new band called 13. The album is out right now. It's called A Magnificent Day for Exorcism. It's out right now on all digital platforms via Fat Beats. And um, what song can I play from that? There's a track called Fight. And the rhythm from Fight, because that's pretty much what, what I try to do when I, depends on the job. In the hip hop world, a lot of people, they just reference, they may reference like a, a James Brown groove or Clyde Stubblefield Jabo, you know, but that's pretty much what I did for this particular song. I think we referenced um, Little Miss Lover by Jimi Hendrix because it kind of had that vibe. And those drums on that record is just so classic. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm actually going to play it. So the, middle, the Little Miss Lover beat was... So the fight groove was kind of inspired by that. And of course, I play, played it differently, but... Let me, let me, I'm going to do another rendition of that. And this time I'm going to play without the muffles. See, so y'all can hear the, hear the tone. So that was fight with a couple of fills in it. The last groove that I'm going to introduce or play or demonstrate is a track. Um, what can I play? Hmm. Oh, the last and final track that I'm going to play is from a group called DMD Divides, which I'm in it. The DMD are initials. The first D is myself, Dobby Jones. The M is for Marcus Machada. Same guitars from Pete Rock's band and Farrah Wins band. And the last D is Doug Wimbers from Living Color. Um, we got a group called DMD The Vibes, and stay tuned. We're going to put out the release at some point, hopefully this year. Um, we came up with a single a couple years ago, and the name of this track is called At The Dark. And um, cool story, I remember going and meeting Doug Wimbers. He's the bassist for Living Color. He's played with a lot of legendary artists. And so the name of this track is called At The Dark, and I'm just going to play the groove. It starts off with the drums. It's like this, this, this type of... Um, African, and basically, I try to fuse percussion with drums when I'm playing a kit. So I want to be the percussionist and the drummer at the same time. Get a little bit more, you know. Instead of hiring the percussionist, sometimes you know I just try to make the most of the sounds that I get from the drums. That way, I can get a little bit more more money, maybe. But yeah, the name of this track is called After Dark, and it's really drum oriented. And it goes like this.
there you have it. Three grooves, three different projects, three different approaches, kind of similar with the hip hop rock and roll vibe. And basically, you know, each setting, when you go into these settings, just try to service the music. If you do that, you're gonna make a good name for yourself and hopefully get more work. My name is Darryl Jones. Thanks for having me at Sweetwater Gear Fest virtually. We're live at Electric Garden Studio. Shout out to Jimmy Jam Brown, Jackie Broom, and also Jacob for assisting me today. My name is Darryl Jones. Peace.